my official 48 hour readathon where I just read holiday reads and live my best Christmas life. Let's get started. <music> My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Mariah Carey is playing in the background and all is right in the world. You know what I'm saying? I don't want a lot for Christmas. So in today's video, I will be reading for 48 hours and I will be trying to read as many wintry and cozy books as I possibly can to get into the Christmas spirit. So this 48 hour readathon is actually something that I am doing over on Patreon with my Golden Key and Ink and Quill Club members. And basically we want to do slumber parties where we hang out and we read all weekend long. And this is our very first one. And this one is very, very kindly being co-hosted with one of my best friends in the whole entire world, Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. I asked Gavin if he would like to host this readathon with me and we had so much fun kind of like creating the theme for this readathon together as well as the prompts and I would love to share that with you now. So the name of the readathon is the Baby It's Cold Outside Readathon and it was actually Gavin's idea to kind of make all of the prompts centered around different Christmas songs and so I kind of created this bingo board and the goal goal is to try to get bingo throughout 48 hours by trying to get some of the different prompts. And every single prompt is a Christmas song, which goes back to our Christmas song prompts list. And we actually came up with all these together. Some of these gems though are all Gavin. Like he actually came up with the very first one, which is something about Mariah self carry, which is like the coolest prompt I've ever heard of in my entire life. And Gavin and I also created a Christmassy playlist, which I will list down below. Before we get started, let me go ahead and explain all of the different prompts. So the first prompt is all I want for Christmas is you, which is to do a little Mariah self carry. And this is open to interpretation. We can do whatever we want to make ourselves feel like we are doing some self care. The next one is you make it feel like Christmas, read a book with festive vibes. Next we have run, run Rudolph, which is to join in on reading sprints. We are doing slumber party reading sprints together and it was a really good time time, you will see. Next is Oh Holy Night, read in a cozy atmosphere. The next book is Hot Chocolate, which is to make yourself a festive drink. The next one is Sleigh Ride, which is to read a book that goes on a journey. Next is Frosty the Snowman, which is to read a book with snow or white on the cover. Next up is Santa Tell Me, which is to share your TBR. And then finally is Where Are You Christmas, which is to watch a holiday movie. And Gavin and I have planned this out. So we did some slumber party reading sprints and then we also did a holiday Hallmark Christmas watch along party. It was honestly such a fun weekend. So now that I've kind of explained the 48 hour readathon, you know the prompts, you know the bingo board, and you kind of know like all the stuff that's happening, let's jump right into the vlog. Hello friends, it is finally here, the 48 hour readathon slumber party of my dreams. Today is day one and I'm actually just about to start some reading sprints with Gavin, all of my patients. Patreons and all of his Patreons and my Patreons, I think it's for the Golden Key members and also the Ink and Quill Club. And I just like, I honestly could not be more excited. This is my very first slumber party with my Patreon and I've wanted to do this for such a long time. So I've kind of compiled a little bit of like a mood winter TBR. I'm going to be filling out the actual TBR prompt thing and then putting it on my socials as well. But I'll probably do that after the first round of like reading sprints and things like that. Because honestly, I don't fully know exactly what I'm gonna be reading, but I do have a big stack of books here. So let's go through it. <laughs> also, if you're wondering what the heck all of these are, that is snow. That's like fake snow. That's gonna go on top of my bookcases and basically just like around the house and everything because 
I'm going to be trying to decorate today. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Sometimes the decorating takes a lot longer than I think, and then sometimes it goes super fast, but okay. So the very first one is a picture book, which I know maybe probably shouldn't count, but to me it counts, I'm, I'm counting it. And that is Elf. <laughs> I actually found this at Target. And when I saw this, I was like, I need to get, it. I mean, look at this. Look at that, that is so cute. And then like, look at the back. Amazing. The next one isn't technically super wintry, but it is my November book club pick for the Whimsy and Wit book club, which is my middle grade book club. And it's also my pick for the prompt, a book that takes you on a journey. And that's Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. At this point, this is my fourth reread of it. And every single time, it just reminds me why I love middle grade. The next one is also not super like festive, but the rest are, the rest are, I promise. Okay. But this one is whimsical and it's called The Witch Hat Atelier Volume 1. It is a manga and it's supposed to be just about this cute little witch named Coco. Apparently where she lives, people have said that you were just born with magic, but then she discovers that you can actually learn magic. And so I think it's about her trying to become a witch. And then we've got this stack of festive possibilities. The first one is an adult cozy mystery and it's called Murder of a Crow. Christmas. I don't know why I did that voice, but it did feel right. And this is a cozy murder mystery. I think it takes place at an inn or at a hotel. And apparently Santa Claus, like not the real one, okay? But like somebody who is dressed up as Santa Claus is found dead underneath the Christmas tree. Next up is The Enchanted Sonata. And this is by Heather Dixon Walwork. And I think this is supposed to be sort of like a spin on the Nutcracker. I don't know a lot more about that. I I wanna say that this is adult fantasy, but it could be YA but I think it's adult. And then we've got the Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place. Ashton Place, The Mysterious Howling. So this is by Mary Rose Wood and it is a middle grade and it's about a nanny who has been hired to try to teach, I think, these children manners before like an, a Christmas party or something like that. Maybe it's a ball. I don't know. It sounds really, really festive and super, super cute. And it's fairly short. And then the final one I have is the Rewind. Tonight they'll fall in love like it's 1999. I found this in the romance Christmas section at my bookstore. So I'm assuming that this is festive, but watch it not be festive. And I think that's it. I do have quite a few other holiday romances that I might potentially reach for as well, like if these are not doing it for me, but I didn't want to overwhelm myself with a huge, huge TBR to begin with. So we're gonna work with these first, but it's actually almost time for my reading sprints with Gavin and with our Patreons. I'm so excited. I love doing reading reading sprints with Gavin. We have these and then tonight actually I have a book club with all of my Patreons which is separate from the slumber party. And then tomorrow Gavin and I are also doing like a movie night. And I think we're also gonna do like face masks and we're gonna have like festive drinks and stuff like that. So I'm really, really, really excited. But I have to go because I have to go over and kind of get everything set up for the reading sprints. I'm so excited. I've kind of come up with like a fun new game and hopefully like everyone likes it. Our Patreons are gonna give us prompts and then we're gonna try to draw the prompts without looking at it. So we're gonna close our eyes or maybe we'll look at each other or something and we'll draw the prompts and we'll see who gets closer to the prompts. So like someone might say Frosty the Snowman and we have to try to draw Frosty the Snowman but we can't look at what we're drawing. We'll see how it turns out. I feel like it's gonna be really chaotic but that's like my vibe during a reading sprint. You know, but I think that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and join Gavin and then I will chat with you guys as soon as everything is over. Okay, bye. Let's yeah. do one last round and then that's it. And do you mm. wanna do like we draw each other? Yeah, let's draw each other. Ooh, Wait, right. let's make it even harder. Draw it upside down. Mm. Three, so we're gonna flip it. two, one. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a unicorn. <laughs> oh wow. Am I melting? <laughs> Hello friends. Okay, so it is officially like 110, I think. But 
we just did the reading sprints and oh my gosh, I honestly thought I, at one point I was gonna lose my voice from laughing so hard. We ended up doing that drawing challenge that I was telling you guys about and it was so funny. And I did make some progress. I am officially on page 292, which means I read about 92 pages. Feeling pretty good about this one. I really, really wanna finish this probably by the end of the actual weekend. I don't know if I wanna finish it all in one day because I do kind of wanna savor it. So I might try to read like half tonight and then half tomorrow. I don't know, we'll see, we'll find out. But I do wanna read this for the journey prompt. But now that we've done the reading sprints, I can officially cross off, I think is it Run Run Rudolph? That prompt, because that prompt is join in on some reading sprint. Oh my gosh, I should have said join in on some re reindeer games. Now you might be asking yourself, Lexi, I thought the whole point of today was to be in your pajamas and do a full cuddle up and read day all day long. And yes, it is, but I want soup. We're gonna go, we're gonna get some soup. And then when I come back, I'm probably going to stay like in a baggy Christmas sweater while I decorate. And then we'll get back into the pajamas, you know? And I'm excited about that pajama life. I really am. I think that's it though. So let's hit the road and let's get some ramen soup. We are here. This is one of my favorite places to get ramen. It's so good. Let's go inside. I am so hungry. Hello. Okay. So I've just finished my ramen. Well, I actually couldn't finish it because there was a lot of soup, but I ate a lot of that ramen and I'm feeling pretty holly jolly. You know, before I go home, I thought it might be kind of fun to pick up some like gingerbread cookie mix because I really want to make gingerbread cookies tomorrow night. Hello. Okay. So shockingly, they did not have any gingerbread mix at Publix, which I found quite odd because there was literally a whole aisle dedicated to gingerbread, but no cookie mix. So I have a couple of options. I do remember a couple of years ago, World Market had really, really cute cookies and cookie mixes. So I'm going to try them. And if they don't have it, then I can try Trader Joe's, but I don't think that Trader Joe's is going to have it. And if Trader Trader Joe's doesn't have it, I can try Fresh Market. It's a quest, okay? I am on my way looking for some gingerbread men that I can bake. Hello besties. I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, gosh, it looks dark and also you've changed. And yes, actually several things. Number one, it's actually like nine o'clock at night. Oops. So here's what happened. Trying to find gingerbread. I went to five different stores. I don't know what it is. No one is stocking gingerbread right now, but that gingerbread excursion took like, I'm not even kidding you, like two and a half hours. It's nine o'clock. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the festive vibes prompt. I don't remember which one that is on my bingo board. I've been killing the bingo board. I did the sprints with Gavin, which was the Run Run Rudolph. I shared my TBR, which is Santa Tell Me. And then I'm about to do hot chocolate. But yes, we're going to make a festive drink. And then we're also going to try to read a book with festive vibes. So <laughs> let me show you the book that I'm choosing to read for festive vibes. That's right, we're going with the picture book. So this is going to be my festive vibe. If you have never watched the movie Elf, I'm begging you. like exit out of this vlog, do yourself a favor, find it online, watch it, your life will be changed for the better. But then I think what I might do is I think I might pick up this Witch Hat Atlier book, volume number one, because I don't know if I can get through this whole thing tonight, but I might be able to. Let's go make a hot chocolate together and let's get our read on. So I thought I would briefly like show you the hot chocolate that I purchased for tonight's cozy night. Um, the first one is this hot cocoa bomb and it looks so festive with the star. Then I found these candy straws. They're peppermint. Doesn't that look so cute? Do you like hot chocolate? Do you, you do. Yes. That's because you're a meow meow of taste. Good girl. And then finally I got these. These are white marshmallow twists. Look at the little nutcrackers. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and make all of this. And then I think I'm gonna come back and actually read here because this is pretty cozy. Yes. Come join in us all. The feeling is here today. Come on now, let's go.
welcome to day number two of the Baby It's Cold Outside 48 hour cuddle up and read weekend slumber party extravaganza. Wow, the title is really something else. I'm feeling pretty wide awake because this morning, as you saw, I actually went to a cozy cafe and I got some coffee and I also got a really, really good breakfast. <laughs> And then on my way home, I was like, tis the season to have a lot of caffeine. So I did get a holiday drink. This one is my favorite. This is the chestnut praline latte. Let's look. What a stunning cup. It's absolutely beautiful. I have lots of updates for you. I did finish three books and I will go ahead and share those with you. But also <laughs> on my way home, I did all, I did, yeah, I, I went to Barnes and Noble, so. Have you seen anything ever as beautiful as a Barnes and Noble? I think not. Let's talk about the books that I actually finished though. The first book that I finished was Elf. And I read this one for the festive vibe vibes prompt. This is just a picture book, but listen, it counts for the readathon because I want it to count for the readathon. Next up, I ended up finishing Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is a reread for me, and this is our Whimsy and Wit book club selection pick. This is, I think, the fourth time reading it for myself. I've read it three times in the past, plus, you know, the one that I just finished. And this is the very first time that I've actually listened to this on audio, and I'm so glad I did. I highly recommend the audio because the audio book actually has, like, music, and it's different music at the end of every single chapter, and the music goes along with the storyline, it's amazing. Also, I don't know who narrates this, but amazing narration. Like every accent for every character was so beyond perfect and so distinct. It was incredible because while I was reading it, I think I got out even more than normal because I was listening to the audio while I was reading along. I just could not recommend that more. This is my favorite middle grade of all time. I think I have come to the conclusion that this is it for me. This is about Morgan Crow. Morgan Crow is trying to get into a secret society called Nevermore. She's cursed to die on her 11th birthday, but she's saved in the nick of time by a man named Jupiter North. And he enters her in these trials. And it's just about her experience trying to get into a secret society. It is cozy, it is magical, it is fast paced. And it is, I think, one of my favorite books ever. If this hadn't been a reread, this would be my favorite book of the entire year. I don't know how rereads rank. Like, I feel like it's not fair to put this as number one if I've already read it multiple times, but there's just no topping this book for me. Next, I finished Witch Hat Atelier, volume number one. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with manga, but I have to tell you, I'm obsessed with this series now. You might be asking yourself, how obsessed are you? Well, I'm so obsessed that I actually bought all the volumes. I think some of these are actually upstairs in my room. Yeah, there's three that are upstairs in my room right now, but I ended up buying all of the volumes. Three, four, and two are in my bedroom. This is one of the most wholesome series I've ever read. It is so precious. I guess as part of the book haul, I bought volumes like one through 10 for this. And this particular manga is about a witch named Coco. She actually is just like a regular person and she doesn't know that you can learn magic. She thinks that you have to be born knowing magic. She kind of discovers that you can like learn magic yourself. I don't wanna give too much away, but something big happens where Coco has to leave her family. And so she ends up studying with this like master witch who was teaching her. It left on a cliffhanger, which is one of the reasons why I decided to buy like every volume because I'm already obsessed. I flew through this. I'm gonna try really hard to not read too many more of those in this particular vlog because I'm trying to do some more like festive type things. But these books are going on my December TBR. And now let me explain why I kind of went to Barnes Noble. So originally there was a different romance on my TBR, but it didn't feel as Christmassy. And so I really, really wanted to read a Christmas romance. I ended up picking up Blame It on the Mistletoe. But I have to say, I don't think I'm as interested in this book because this book really focuses a lot on like being an influencer and she's talking about her numbers and the algorithm and trying to get ahead. As someone who does YouTube, I just don't want to read about someone who's trying to be a social media influencer. I don't know how to explain it. Just her talking about the numbers is stressing me out. So I just wasn't enjoying this very much, so I'm going to put it down. And then very sadly, I've been trying to read Murder for Christmas and I'm also not getting into this. So I did go back to Barnes Noble and I picked up a ton more books. 
Let me show you those now. The first one is by Alexa Martin and it's called Better Than Fiction. And apparently it's about a person named Drew who always prefers, I think like the movie over the book, but then she inherits a bookstore from her grandma called The Book Nook. There's like a best-selling author named Jasper. They have a little bit of a romance together. It sounds really, really cute. Next up we have Agatha Christie's Marple. This is a short story collection and it's by a bunch of current authors and they're all kind of inspired by Agatha Christie's original works, but then they kind of make it into something else. So Lee Bardugo is on here, Lucy Foley is on here, Ruth Ware, Kate Moss. And then I found four more holiday reads. The first one is called The Tourist Attraction. I looked this up and this has really, really good reviews on Goodreads. It's about a guy who has kind of like a tourist trap, that's what it's called, restaurant, and about a girl who goes to Alaska and they meet at his tourist trap restaurant. And I think he falls for the tourist. The next one is White Out. And this is by the same authors who wrote, I think, Blackout. And this is, a it's not a collection of stories. It's actually one giant love story. I was really, really intrigued on the back. So these are all black teenagers and every single chapter is written by a different author. The way it's described in the back is that it's one big puzzle where everyone has a piece and they all play a part in this gigantic like love story that interweaves and like connects a bunch of people. And it just sounds really, really awesome. I think that the cover is so beautiful and I really, really wanna read this. Next up, I got a merry little meet cute. I'm gonna be honest. This is probably going to be my priority because it sounds and looks so precious. I love the cover. I think it looks so, so cute. I don't know. I have like really high hopes for this one. So this says B has a successful career as a plus size adult film star with a huge following and two supportive moms. She couldn't ask for more, but when her favorite producer casts her to star in a Christmas movie he's making for the squeaky clean Hope channel, B's career is about to take a more family friendly direction. And then finally, I picked up Once Upon a December. It says, with a name like Astra Noel Snow, holiday spirit isn't just a seasonal specialty, it's a way of life. But after a stinging divorce, Astra's yearly trip to the Milwaukee Christmas market takes on a whole new meaning. She's ready to eat, drink, and be merry, especially with the handsome stranger who saves the best Kringle for her at his family bakery amazing. So that is that. However, today we're about to get super, super festive because we are finally going to be decorating my bookshelves for the holiday season. And I could not be more excited. What I'm actually going to be doing is listening to a playlist that Gavin and I created. I can link it down below if you are interested in it. And then at some point, I'm probably also going to switch over to a romance audiobook, and I could not be more excited. So with that, let the Christmas decorating begin. It's 15 minutes before we get on. I have just made myself a very cozy hot chocolate. And I think we're actually about to do the live show where we watch like a Christmassy Hallmark type movie. So I'm gonna get it up. I'm gonna go ahead and join the live show. I'm going to enjoy my hot cocoa. And I can't wait. Hello friends. <laughs> 
Hi guys, I am in my super, super cozy, comfy, like Christmas onesie. This thing is so warm and it's exactly what I need on a cold night like this. It is a lot lighter. I don't know if you can tell by the lighting. It's pitch black outside and the live show has ended. It's actually kind of late. It's like definitely past my bedtime for sure. The live show went so well. It was just so much fun. I honestly love doing live shows with my friends. Anytime I do a live show with Gavin, I just end up laughing so hard. I really, really enjoyed the movie. So it's been a little bit and I can give you a little bit of an update on a merry little meet cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone So I'm on page 85 of this book There are quite a few things that I love about this book and quite a few things that I am like not really vibing with quite as much So one of the plot twists is that Nolan <laughs> actually watches B. He kind of watches her on like a website, you know, he watches her work. And so he recognizes her right away. That's like his crush, like in that adult world. And she also had a crush on him when she was younger because he was in a boy band. So it's kind of like the setup here is no one's supposed to know her background, but the main character does and he has a crush on her. Here are the things that I'm loving so far. First of all, I love that our main character B is plus size. I love B as a character. I feel like she's really strong. I feel like she really knows herself and she's really fun and extremely likable. I also really, really like Nolan a lot. I like his backstory. I like that he's bisexual because I feel like there is not enough representation in men in that. So I think that's awesome. I love the conversations so far that are happening around his mom and around mental health. So all that's great. However, I don't think this book is actually working very well for me. When I pick up a romance, I am invested in how they will fall in love with each other. What goes along with that is like anticipation, tension, getting to know someone. And I feel like some of my very favorite romances are the ones that are the most slow and the ones with the most pining. That's what really like interests me is will they get together? Will they not get together? How does one of the characters feel about the other one? Cause we know that this one really likes the other one. And that is just fully completely missing missing in this book so far. It feels like this is what I should find sexy, but I don't at all. What I find sexy is Mr. Darcy's hand twitching after like he helped Elizabeth Bennet up, right? That a hand shouldn't be sexy, but it's much sexier, I think a lot of the times than like what society thinks should be sexy if that makes any sense at all. From like the first page, lust is like the main thing. And I think that that isn't bad. I think the disconnect for me is in their first meeting. In their very first meeting, they don't necessarily take the time to get to know each other. We don't know if they hate each other. We don't know if they're gonna be best friends. They both just immediately start lusting after one another. And like the thoughts are really out there. Like they're very graphic, which I think can be really sexy later on once you've gotten to know the characters and once the characters have some base. But like in my favorite trope, which is friends to lovers, you have this base of like the reason they have feelings for each other in like the lust department is because they get to know each other on this strictly platonic relationship structure and they just like the other's personality. In the people we meet in vacation, Alex and Poppy, yeah, they're they think that the other person is attractive, but they just enjoy and like the other person. And then it's sort of like they try to fight those feelings, but they can't. In any enemies to lovers trope that I've read, they want to hate each other and they do hate each other, but the more they get to know the other person, the more they like that other person and then the feelings come. So it's sort of like lust is like, something that happens after they end up getting to know the person and liking them on some sort of a basis of something. But this just feels sort of odd because it feels like they both keep objectifying each other like again and again and again and again. It just, it's, it's all about sex and nothing about getting to know the characters so far. So I think I'm disappointed in the romance because it doesn't seem like a romance so far. It feels sort of high schoolish. And like, in fact, the guy keeps saying like, it feels sort of like I'm in high school and it's a high school crush or it's like the first time. And I think that there is a place 
for like immediate chemistry. And I do think that that's important in romance, but I'm much more invested in like the actual journey of how they like develop feelings for each other and less about every single graphic thing they wanna do to each other. I will update you hopefully before I go to sleep one more time. And then I'm, I'm probably gonna go to bed because it's really late, but I'm gonna try really hard to stay up a little bit longer tonight because I really wanna finish like an actual romance for this readathon. Let's make some tea, let's get a cookie, and let's keep reading. Hello, it is me again. So the readathon has officially ended and I am here to kind of conclude the vlog, just like I was here to intro the vlog, which I fully forgot to do earlier. But anyways, I ended up reading four books for this readathon, so let's kind of go ahead and go over all of them here. The first one that I finished was Nevermore Trials of Morgan Crow, which is the very first book in Jessica Townsend's middle grade series. This book was even better than I remember, and I have no idea how that's possible because I had already remembered it as being like one of the best books I'd ever read. This book is just like pure magic though. Five out of five stars, could not recommend it more. I am so excited to discuss this for the book club discussion that we're having in Patreon. <laughs> Next up, I don't know how much this counts because it's a picture book, but I did read Elf and this is just such a fun book. I have to tell you, it's exactly like the movie and it was really, really fun to like read along and kind of like go over all of the illustrations. It definitely made me feel like a kid and it also definitely made me want to rewatch Elf. Next up, I did finish the first volume of Witch Hat Atelier. This is such a fun manga series. I mean, clearly, cause like you saw that I have now purchased every single book in this series and I'm so excited to just delve into the world and just stay there for all of the month of December. And then finally, I did read A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. Um, and I have to be honest, like this one was a little bit of a disappointment. I'm also going to be super transparent and say that even though I've been on booktube for four years, and even though I have a master's in library science and I used to conduct in-person book clubs, and also I used to dissect literature in my undergrad for English literature, I still feel uncomfortable saying when I don't like a book online. I don't want you to think that just because I'm saying I don't like a book means that you should shouldn't pick up the book because every single person has different taste. Having said all of those disclaimers, which I know are unnecessary, I wish that I had liked this book. Let me tell you what this book did well. First of all, I loved that our main protagonist was plus size. I feel like we need to see more of that in romance. And I feel like her as a character was incredible. Be herself was so vivacious, so fun, so cheery. I just really, really enjoyed her personality a lot. I also really enjoyed Nolan's personality a lot. I also really, really enjoyed the cast overall. I loved the costume designer. I loved Bee's best friend. I like loved so many things and so many people in this particular world. I think that one thing that the authors really nailed well was the humor. I felt like there were lots and lots of parts of this book that were really quirky and funny. So there was a lot in here that I thought was handled well and I think has the potential to make this a book that so many people end up loving. But at the end of the day, this is a romance. And and romance is super, super subjective. And my subjective opinion on it was that it was not romantic. And because I just did not like anything involving the romance, I ended up just really not liking the book. My personal take in romance books is that you can have very, very steamy scenes and they can still be really romantic. And not only can scenes be really sexy, but they can just be about connection and about like bringing the characters together. And I've read some very, very steamy romance books, I think that do this really, really well. I think Talia Hibbert is actually probably my favorite romance author as far as very, very steamy scenes, but also making it feel very romantic and like connected and things like that. For me, nothing about this felt romantic. The two characters, like the two main characters, B and Nolan got together so quickly um, without really establishing any kind of relationship, any kind of platonic friendship or anything. It was more to just get it out of their system. Just nothing was romantic. It was like things that I should feel are sexy 
but really I just was like uncomfortable with the language and I wasn't uncomfortable with like how graphic it was, but I was just uncomfortable with the way it was written and it just kind of felt icky to me. Like it just wasn't romantic. And so for that, I give it two stars. I don't know if I've ever read a romance that I've like enjoyed less, which is sad. I think that's it though. I didn't read quite as much as I wanted to because I stopped and started two other books, which was Murder for Christmas and then also Blame It on the Mistletoe, but that's okay. I feel like the four books that I read were pretty enjoyable for the most part, except for maybe the last one. I am still on the hunt for my perfect holiday romance this year. I think that the holiday romances kind of have big shoes to fill because In a Holidays by Christina Lauren is my favorite holiday romance of all time. And I don't know if I'll ever find a holiday romance that will beat it. If you have any recommendations for cute, cozy holiday romances, please let me know down below because I would honestly love to find my next favorite one. I think that's it though. That concludes the readathon. I had literally the best time ever. I just had so much fun doing the reading sprints with Gavin. He's just such a fun person and he's one of my best friends. And I just had the best time hosting with him and also hanging out with all of you guys. I also had so much fun during the holiday romance movie section. It was so much fun to like message everyone as we were watching. It was so much fun again to like participate with Gavin and like hang out and discuss the movie together. It honestly was just like the perfect weekend. And we had so much fun that I think we're actually going to be doing more slumber parties with our Patreons together in the future. By the way, he also has a Patreon and it is incredible and so magical and just so Gavin. So if you are interested in checking it out, I will link it down below along with my Patreon. I think that's it. If you have made it to this point of the video, please let me know what your very favorite holiday movie is down below. And if you have made it to this point of the video, please leave me the Santa Claus emoji. I think that's it for now though, you guys. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Hey, Santa, the city is covered in snow tonight. Where did my love go? Santa, I'm waiting for him, but he's...